The Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Corn School. Today I'm down in Blenheim, Ontario, catching up with Steph Mislick. Pride agronomist, how you doing? I'm doing good. A little cold. I know, uh, and we've got uh, we got some corn all across Ontario that's been struggling with uh, some, some with the shivers. Uh, no different here, uh, but hopefully maybe we get a little answer here today. How we can help corn through the season? Want to talk about foliar application of nutrients in season? Um, we did a video on it last year, and I want to talk about that a little bit and talk about what you did from a research perspective last year. But first of all, what are the advantages? Why do we want to be thinking about feeding corn from a foliar perspective in season? Well, we know that there's nutrients and we need them to be available for us to be able to push yields. And we know it's always in the soil or the temperature can affect whether it's available or not, whether other things tie each other up. So for foliar feeding, we can make sure that plant gets it when it actually needs it and help us push those yields. Margins are getting tighter. So we need to find ways to help us achieve more and have a positive return on investment and yeah. keep moving forward. Now, tissue testing, big part of that. Um, let, let's go back and have a quick look at 2023. You worked with uh, Nutri-Analytics. Um, you've got, let's see, a 14.9 bushel yield advantage to doing that in-season foliar application. Tell us about that trial. So that was following Nutri-Analytics' regular program. So they recommend three tissue tests on corn, one at the V three staging, one around V7, V8, and again at VTR1. Um, so I pulled those samples, sent them away. They come back with a recommendation to me using their software, which I can't explain exactly how it works. Algorithms are amazing, but it tells me what is gonna be limiting to that crop before the crop even knows. So then you go in, you apply those nutrients at those three timings, but a week after the samples are pulled, and at the end, we wait and see what happens. Mm. But now you've got about a $31 ROI return on, on the whole sort of investment. You also wanted to do something different. You know, in 2024, you know, you wanted to look at adding a fungicide because you were, you know, you were looking at, uh, you know, just, uh, just the fertilizer application. Um, what's the strategy there? So 2023 was no fungicide. So we know tar spot came in and tar spot definitely was high pressures in 23, caused a lot of problems, affected some yields. So I wanted to see if we add them together, what synergy do we get from doing both? You know, they always talk about does one plus one equal two? Does it equal three? So I wanted to find out. I wanted to know what advantage we'd get if we did both. Because right now we know fungicide's a no brainer. Everyone's gonna do it. So what about foliar? Does it, does it add enough of a difference to pay for it to make it worthwhile? Okay, Steph, let's take a look at your trial from 2024. Um, you looked at two hybrids here. Um, take us through, I guess, maybe the season and, and what these numbers, uh, what they tell us. Okay, so for 24, in order to add the fungicide and kind of see the advantages, so I laid it out with an untreated check, then I had a fungicide-only strip, a foliar only strip and a fungicide plus foliar so we could see the advantages of each one individually and them added together so the first hybrid was a 6975 g2 so it was a brand new one we launched for this year kind of a workhorse really good across soil types this was on a clay loam site planted towards the end of may i believe it was the 24th um 35 000 population and there all these strips are side by side in pancora research site so when we did it, it, you know, my first thought was the fungicide only is going to do really well because we know tar spots have high pressure. When we, we got a 39 bushel increase to just a fungicide, then with the foliar only, you know, saw a good result as well. Got a, almost 29 bushel increase. So not quite as good as a fungicide, but definitely, definitely worthwhile. And you can visually see there was some health benefits to adding a foliar, even without the fungicide. Then when you put them together, yes, the plant was cleaner but it didn't add a whole lot more yield. So it was only a bushel better than the fungicide by itself. So you didn't see that, that synergy you were hoping to see, right? No, um, I didn't. Okay, talk about this, uh, this the second hybrid that you, you tested. So the second one I tested is A2 7275 G2, um, another brand new one. It's a racehorse is how I would classify it. Um, really utilized nutrients a lot differently than 6975. It utilized everything it could out of that plant and you could visually see it throughout the season. So it, it you know, for it was a 252 bushel on an untreated check, so awesome numbers to start with. Adding a fungicide added another 23 bushel, so a good response. So definitely one worthwhile with the fungicide. But it's when we got into adding the foliar and the foliar and a fungicide, we actually basically 
for two two bushel and five bushel. So not a whole lot of advantage to foliar feeding or doing them both together. So Steph, let's unpack what you've learned here. Um, I guess the first thing that calls out to me is the difference in hybrids. Hybrid choice does make a difference. It makes a huge difference. No two hybrids are the same. They all utilize nutrients differently. They grow differently. They respond differently. So that's part of the puzzle we're trying to solve is what do they each one want individually and right. try to meet those needs. And you had a racehorse and a workhorse there that performed much differently. Very differently. Yeah. 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 And um, I guess the sense that uh, you know, uh, you know, crop nutrients is not the only yield limiting factor. It's not. I mean, we've, it, sun, temperature, water, all those things can play a big role, and they also lead into the disease and insects we can see. You know, the wetter we are, the more tar disease we're going to have, more tar spot, yep. and yields determined from the day it's planted to the day it finishes. Like, there's so many factors in between that can affect what our end result is. But there is evidence there, and we've seen it in two years, that the, there is an impact when you foliar feed, you know, nutrients. I, that, that tissue test does help. Oh, it does. Visually, you can see there's a difference in the crop that had the foliar fertilizer applied. So it's doing something. Just trying to figure out exactly how do we push it to get always get a return on investment exactly. from it. So, hey, that begs the, the question. Year three, you're doing it again this year. Um, you've changed it up two years in a row. Um, based on what you've learned in year two, where do you go in year three? So, we use the same hybrids again. Going to do two kind of, they're each going to get their own little project. 69.75, we're going to look at timings. So there's the three timings, like does timing one pay, does timing two, or timing three. So, so you actually own. individually look at those timings. Yeah, so if one of them pays better than the other, you can take advantage of putting it on at that time. And then 72.75, because it utilized absolutely everything, and you can visually see it, does it need more? Does it need more than what the algorithms are saying? So kind of potentially double the rates and just see what happens. Well, hey, fascinating stuff. A great research trial. Uh, Steph, always great to have you on. Thank you. Of course, cool. Thanks.